Now I'm going to show you how to handle terminal and cable targets so that on the reports, the output, you can control where the target information appears. So I'm going to start right at the beginning and create a, a project. Target control. And I'm going to use, um, I'm actually using the basic version here, so I must make sure never to use the standard SOLIDWORKS template here because that will cause problems with wire numbering and I won't see the actual wire numbers appear. So I'm going to use consecutive code numbers. Before I create any pages, I'm going to go to the properties and I'm going to set up so that when I place a cable in, it automatically numbers it with a number. So I'm going to start with W something and that will be W1234. So I'm going to create a new page. Simple enough. <clears throat> I've already got a macro here of incoming power, so I'm going to just plonk that down on the page. And I've got some wire links there, 424 volt and 0 volt and some three phase. So that's good. I'm now going to create a new page. And I'll call it uh, indication. And I'm going to put a top this bar on there, 24 volt in this case. Let me just pick it from the list. There we go. And I'm going to put one on the bottom, which is a zero volt. Okay. Now I'm going to put some uh, wiring on here, single wire. And I want to copy that a few times across the page. I'm actually going to use Control X to remove it, then Control V, and before I place it in. I'm going to hit zero on the keyboard, click it down, and say, actually, I want five of those. Click OK, and then I want a spacing of 40. So that's done exactly 40 millimeter spacing for all of those. So I'm going to start with some indication. I'm going to start by placing on some lamps on here. So I'll type lamp on my symbols and hit the filter, and I'm going to bring up, uh, let's bring up the 61346, choose lamp, and <clears throat> I'm going to type L before I insert it to allow me to draw a line across there, and I've got my lamps going across. So, everything looking good so far. <clears throat> I'm now going to place on some terminals, so I'm going to type, type on their term, on the filter, and I'm going to go down my list, and let's have a look. 6, 13, 46, and I'm going to go for a terminal with the text going across, uh, or rotated by 90 degrees. So I'm going to hit L again, draw those going across, and I'll leave it as X1 and just click on OK for those. Same thing for the ones underneath, or in fact what I could do is just highlight those Control C and then Control V to paste those underneath. So those are all numbered and they're all working correctly. Now if I was to quickly go into my graphical list, what I could do is actually set up a terminal. <clears throat> I'm going to go to the properties and I'm going to set up uh, to use a slightly different one, just another straightforward list in the basic version of C-Electrical, and I'm going to go to Generate, and it's generated a nice list of terminals. But what we're getting to here is that we've got the target of 24 volt on one side, and then going down we've got the actual lamps on the other side, and it swaps over. And it might be the case that I want to always have my lamps on the right-hand side, and my supply and zero volt on the other side. So in order to control that, what we need to do is to realize that under electrical, we have an option there of displaying connections. And this shows us the order of the connection points on the symbol. And from the first row of terminals, we have a pink connection point. So the yellow is always the first connection point on the symbol. Pink is the second. So we've got pink going to the lamp. And underneath, we've got yellow going to the lamp. So what we need to actually do, very simply, is select our terminals underneath and use the swap command. Swap will switch those connection points around so that they're in a different order. So if we now right click and choose generate on a terminal strip, what we've now got is a list where all of the lamp information is on the right hand side. So we've got control over that. Let's try the same thing there. We can turn the connections off for a moment. Try the same thing for cabling. So we'll go to the cable command. <coughs> We can just draw a default line through that, or we can choose, in this case, C cable number, click OK, and that will give us a nice little fob on the left hand side, showing the cable number. Let's put 
bit of description in there, 24 volt cable. And do the same thing underneath. So we've got two cables on there. <clears throat> this time I can go to the cable call list, go to the properties, and I'm going to set this one again for a slightly different one, call graphic, right click, choose generate, and we see the information, and again we get the same situation, terminals on one side, then it switches, and we have the same terminal strip, but now on the other side. <coughs> so, if we go back to this indication page, turn on the connections, we can see the same situation, we have two connection points indicating the order. So, after the actual device, I'm going to switch these by clicking on the cable, choosing swap, <coughs> and notice that those two terminals switch round. So if I just generate that cable call list again, then we've got all the information, the terminals on one side, the lamp on the other side. So we've got control over terminals and cables, even in the basic version of C-Electrical. And in fact, both of these reports and this functionality can also be used in the free version, although of course you're limited to three pages. Any of these reports, if you need uh, any of these, then uh, just email uh, uk at igxao.com and I can uh, email those back to you.